And what I've done here is, you see, this is this is the present right here, and this is basically 10,000 years ago over here on, on the right side. And and I've drawn a level, there's a level green line in here to kind of give you a, a, a comparison. And you, you'll notice something. Here's this 8,200 year ago cold spike, right? And then as we're going along here, you, you'll notice something that the, the general amplitude of these oscillations starts increasing as we get closer to the present. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, it gets bigger. And you'll also notice that, that it's dropping. It's dropping below that green line. It, and that means it's cooling. So in the last 10,000 years, we went from a period of considerable warmth in the, in the immediate post-glacial era, and then it began to cool off around 6,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago. And as it began to cool off, the temperature oscillations began to increase in magnitude, okay, which actually contradicts the computer models that are saying the oscill amplitude of the oscillations is going to increase as the climate gets warmer. What we actually see from the Greenland ice cores is the opposite of that, and it's right here in this graph. But what's really significant about this is when we go back beyond 10,000 years ago. Whoa. And we see this. Jesus Christ. Yeah. For folks who are listening, there's a giant change. I mean, yeah. we're looking at little tiny, you know, maybe millimeter left, right, left, right, yeah. left, right, up until this point. Now we're looking at huge changes. Huge changes. Wow. Catastrophic changes of temperature. Yeah. And, and here we're going back. This is, look, notice this, this is between uh, 11, right here, roughly 11,600 years ago and about 14,000 years ago. Look at what happened right here. You can see right around 15,000 years ago, the climate is, is actually, if we took this thing out of here, you can see there's almost a, a trend upwards that gets interrupted right here. Boom, instantly. Boom, overnight. Giant jump. Overnight, overnight, yeah. And in fact, um, what has happened is if you go back through the literature of, of climate change and you read the, the estimates of how long it took for the planet to shift modes from full glacial to the interglacial like we're in now, 50, 75 years ago, it was a thousand or more years, thousands of years. When radiocarbon dating came along in the 50s, it began to compress. And what happened is that if you look in the 80s, they're talking about perhaps a century, several centuries. Now comes the Greenland ice cores and other ice cores and other proxies, deep sea cores and so forth, and, and the correlation of all of this evidence. And it goes from centuries to decades. Well, as the ability to perceive these changes with ever greater precision and ever greater resolution has evolved, it's gotten to now where the change, the climate change that took us from glacial to interglacial happened in less than five years. Whoa. And that's what we're seeing right here in this graph. What? That's, that's what we're so seeing. So right, 2010, yeah. glacier, 2015, done. Well, Ice age over. It, the glacier, yeah. Bear in mind now that there was a considerable lag between the actual, the, 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 the manifestation of the glaciers, because the glaciers didn't melt that quick. Right, because they're so huge. Right. But the It'd temperature be just like, that started. Imagine that we had a big chunk of ice. Right. We had an ice sculpture here, right? And if the temperature is, you know, 31 degrees, it's not going to melt. If you turn the temperature up to 70 degrees, right, we could turn the temperature up in a matter, and it could warm up the room in a matter of hours or minutes, but it's going to take a while for that ice sculpture to melt. There's going to be a lag. See? Right. Although the change that led to that meltdown was virtually instantaneous, you see. Right. So, but in that, in that period, in this interim, what we're seeing right here, there was an extraordinary, right here, I think uh, if I go to the next slide, I think, you know, let's go to the next one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see this. There were two massive warming spikes. One right here, you can see that we're down here in full glacial mode right there. And then boom, right there, this huge spike of, of warming. Now, right what there. does that represent when it comes to like temperatures? Uh, that could be on the order of, well, that would be about 10 to 12 degrees centigrade, which would be about 18 degrees Fahrenheit, average temperature. Which is a crazy, crazy change. Crazy, crazy change. Because we're again, scared of two degrees, right? We're scared of two degrees. And here we're looking, we're scared two two degrees centigrade. Here we're looking at five, six times that much in a matter of a couple of years, you see. Wow. At this point, we don't really have an explanation for this. 
That's why I get really frustrated when somebody says to me, oh, the debate on climate change is over. No, no, no. We're, 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 at, we're in the infancy of understanding the climate of this planet. And when we look at stuff like this, you see, um, it, it really drives home that point. And you can see here. Right I think here. what people are saying when they're saying that the debate on climate change is over, though, is whether or not human beings have had an impact on it in current times. 